वेलकम बैक टू लिटरेचर गाइड टुडेज वीडियो इज अबाउट वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टंट टॉपिक्स ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट पिराडिकल एसेज पिराडिकल एसेज अपियर्ड इन द लिटररी मैगजीन्स एंड जर्नल्स इन द एटीन सेंचुरी इट इज प्रेज्यूम्ड दैट द पिराडिकल एसेज अपियर्ड इन रिचर्ड स्टील्स फेमस पिराडिकल द टैटलर इन सेवनटीन ओ नाइन द टैटलर वॉज फॉलोड बाय जोसेफ एडिसन्स फेमस पिराडिकल द स्पेक्टैटर विच अपियर्ड इन सेवनटीन इलेवन बोथ रिचर्ड स्टील एंड जोसेफ एडिसन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन द टैटलर एंड द स्पेक्टैटर द पिराडिकल एसेज विविडली गिव्स इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द सोशल पॉलिटिकल एंड रिलिजियस कंडीशन्स ऑफ द एटीन सेंचुरी द टैटलर ऑफ रिचर्ड स्टील वॉज अपोज बाय अ फीमेल टैटलर इट वॉज फॉलोड बाय अनदर पिराडिकल बाय रिचर्ड स्टील दैट इज द गार्डियन विच अपियर्ड इन सेवनटीन थर्टीन देर वर मेनी पिराडिकल्स अपियर्ड ऑन द लिटररी सीन फॉर एग्जाम्पल द एग्जामिनर द इंग्लिश मैन एंड डॉक्टर जॉन्सन्स फेमस पिराडिकल्स द आइडल एंड द रैमल अलॉन्ग विथ ऑलिवर गोल्ड स्मिथ्स द बी विच अपियर्ड इन सेवनटीन फिफ्टी नाइन इट इज इम्पॉर्टंट टू नोट दैट दिज अ पिराडिकल इसेज नॉट ओनली अपील टू द लवर्स ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर बट ऑल्सो टू दोज हु आर इंटरेस्टेड इन मेन एंड मैनर्स फैशंस एंड रिक्रिएशंस ऑफ द एटीन सेंचुरी These periodicals were mouthpieces of the two major parties the Tories and the Whigs of the 18th century Coffee houses also played important role in the growth of the periodical essays This video contains all the important information about the various factors responsible for the growth of the periodical essays i have already produced a video on this particular topic literary magazines and periodicals you can watch that video by visiting this channel literature guide i am very thankful to my subscribers and non subscribers who have given staunch support to this channel literature guide and this channel will continue producing videos for the students who have been taking competitive exams and university exams i don't want to waste your time let's dive into the video and enjoy the video Eighteenth century periodical essay. In the beginning of eighteenth century, essays began to appear in literary magazines and periodicals, which were published at regular intervals in the eighteenth century. Its aim was social reformation, and it conformed to neoclassical ideal, which put stress on informing the mind and delighting the heart of the reading public. The periodical essays reflect the social, political, and literary picture of the eighteenth century. Though exact date and year of the beginning of the periodical essays cannot be given, it is generally presumed that the first periodical essay appeared in the Richard Steele's periodical called Tatler in 1709. It was founded by Richard Steele on the 12th of April 1709. The Tatler was written in satirical and moral vein attacking the social evils of gambling and dueling. Richard Steele started a magazine called Tatler in 1709 with the aim of exposing the false and corrupt manners of the contemporary society. The Tatler was a periodical originally started by Richard Steele and later on joined by Joseph Addison. 
The purpose of this periodical was to expose the false arts of life, to pull off the disguise of cunning, vanity, and affectation, and to recommend a general simplicity in our dress, our discourse, and our behavior. In this periodical, Richard Steele adopted the name of the character of Isaac Bickerstaff and this name was borrowed from Jonathan Swift. The Tatler also included letters, stories, reviews of recent plays, and publications, and spoof advertisement along with the real ones. The Tatler had a satiric and moral tone, attacking the evils of dueling and gambling, and it also discussed the matters of good manners of the time. The Tatler was republished in book form and was popular for its light satiric tone. In this joint venture Joseph Addison also contributed suggestions, notes and a number of complete papers with equal zeal and force as steel. Some poems of Jonathan Swift appeared in the Tatler. Alexander Pope borrowed some material on fashions for his famous Rape of the Lock from the Tatler. Out of Tatler essays, Addison contributed 42. 36 others are written jointly with Steele, while at least 180 are the works of Steele alone. Richard Steele's Tatler appeared three times a week. Many more periodicals magazines tried to ape these periodicals. The female Tatler appeared in opposition to Richard Steele's Tatler. It was written in satirical vein. The female Tatler was edited by Phoebe Crackenthorpe. John Henry Bolingbroke's periodical The Examiner appeared in 1710. It was a Tory mouthpiece, and it attacked superstitions and the historical elements of Christianity. It is important to note that Alexander Pope's The Essay on Man was greatly influenced John Henry Bolingbroke. Richard Steele's Tatler was followed by Joseph Addison's Spectator in 1711. These periodicals enabled the ordinary and common man to read and discuss any topic ranging from philosophy to fashion. It is often said that the periodical essayists brought the philosophy out of the closets and libraries, schools and colleges to the streets of London. They taught people how to behave in a society. It was the first time that the essay was used for some social purpose. The great literary figures like Dr. Johnson and Oliver Goldsmith had also contributed to the periodicals such as The Rambler, The Idler, and The Bee. The Spectator succeeded the Tatler from the 1st of March 1711 to 1712 which was produced jointly by Joseph Addison and Richard Steele. After an interval for some time, it reappeared in 1714, it was revived by Joseph Addison and 80 numbers were added to it. This periodical appeared daily except on Sundays. It was closely connected with London and its coffee houses. Joseph Addison in this periodical has artistically carved out his famous Spectator Club. The Spectator Club has popular members like Sir Roger de Coverley, who can be deemed as a representative of Tory party, the Whig merchant Sir Andrew Freeport, Captain Sentry of the Army, and Will Honeycomb a man about town. Mr. Spectator is a man of learning and likes to travel and he also visits London as an observer. This periodical was mainly dealt with contemporary manners, morals and literature. In this periodical Addison's 19 essays became famous for they were literary papers on John Milton's famous epic Paradise Lost, and his 11 essays dealt with pleasures of imagination. The primary goal of this periodical was to enliven morality with wit, and to temper wit with morality. The Spectator was written in satiric tone. The Tatler and the Spectator were the beginning of the modern essay. Their studies of human character, as exemplified in Sir Roger de Coverley, are the preparation for the modern novel. Out of Tatler essays, Addison contributed 42, 36 others are written jointly with Steele, while at least 180 are the works of Steele alone. Richard Steele founded a periodical called The Guardian in 1713. Joseph Addison, George Berkeley, and Euston Spudgel contributed to The Guardian. The Guardian was opposed by The Examiner. It was followed by The Female Tatler, The Englishman, Whisper and others. Almost all the great literary figures contributed to such periodicals. 
These periodicals represented Whig and Tory parties, but their importance is only from literary point of view. These periodicals offered to literary aspirants an outlet for self-expression and brought out to the full of their talent. The greatest and the best figures of the periodical essays are Joseph Addison and Richard Steele. Jonathan Swift has also contributed some of his finest essays like Meditation Upon a Broomstick through the medium of periodical papers. Similarly, Alexander Pope's essay on gardens appeared in The Guardian. It has been generally acknowledged that among Richard Steele's, Jonathan Swift, and Drive, Samuel Johnson, Joseph Addison is undoubtedly the master. Joseph Addison is the sunshine which melts the ice and dries the mud and makes the earth filled with light and hope. Like Jonathan Swift, Addison despised Sham but unlike him, he never lost faith in humanity. In all his satires, there is sobriety which makes one think better of his fellow men even when he laughs at their little vanities. In the world of artificiality and moral laxity, Joseph Addison came with a wholesome message of refinement and simplicity. His essays are the best picture of the new social life of England. The characters created by Addison have become immortal in the realm of English novel. Through his essays, the periodical essay is perfected the English style. As Dr. Samuel Johnson stated whoever wishes to attain an English style familiar but not coarse, must give his days and nights to the volumes of Addison. Along with Joseph Addison, Richard Steele's contributed through his periodical called Dattler to the development of English essays. His contribution to the periodical essay is really noteworthy. Richard Steele's Trumpet Club and its members have also found a permanent place in the hearts of English people. Along with Richard Steele and Joseph Addison, Samuel Johnson's periodicals Rambler and the Idler developed the English periodical essay. Johnson's early essays have a heavy style and a serious subject matter. Therefore, they could not make themselves popular. The Idler was mainly started by Samuel Johnson and it comprised more over 104 papers. It was published in the Universal Chronicle, or Weekly Gazette from 15 April 1758 to 5 April 1760. These papers are written in a lighter vein whereas the Rambler was in serious tone. They include the well-known sketches of Dick Minim, the critic, of Mr. Sober, Johnson himself, and Jack Whirler, John Newbury the publisher. Twelve papers were by other writers, including three by Joshua Reynolds and three by Thomas Wharton the Younger. The title was later used for a monthly journal edited by Jerome K. Jerome and Robert Barr. The periodical called The Rambler appeared twice in a week which was started by Dr. Samuel Johnson. It comprised 208 papers, and it was published from the 20th of March 1750 to the 14th of March 1752. Edward Cave was the publisher. The essays deal with a variety of subjects like ethics, crime, marriage etc. They include character studies, allegories, eastern fables, and literary criticism and essays on John Milton. The work opens with a prayer by Johnson which indicates moral seriousness of his enterprise. A fine account of the inception and writing of the papers is given in James Boswell's Life of Johnson. Minor contributions came from Samuel Richardson, Elizabeth Carter, Hester Chapone, and Catherine Talbot. In spite of the initial protests against its solemn tone, the Rambler was pirated and imitated, and went through ten numbered reprinting in Johnson's lifetime. Oliver Goldsmith started his literary career as a periodical essayist with his contribution to his periodical The Bee which appeared in 1759. He also contributed to many periodicals such as Busy Body, The Critical Review, and The Ladies' Magazine. He also worked for Tobias Smollett's British Magazine. Thus, the periodicals gave a chance to many literary writers to give expression to their talent. The emergence of the periodical essay can be attributed to various factors. 
One of the most important causes of the popularity of periodical essays is rise of the reading public, spread of education, growth in the number of educated women and the rise of the two political parties, Whig and Tory that needed their political mouthpieces. The rise of the coffee houses as centers of social, political, and literary life helped for the development of the periodical essays. According to A. H. Humphrey, the periodical essay was a popular form of literature and communication and recreation in the 18th century because it was the mirror of the Augustan age in England. The periodical essays gave the new patrons pleasure as well as instruction. It was delicate and sensitive synthesis of literature and journalism. It could be read, appreciated and discussed at the tea table or in the coffee houses. It was suited to the moral temper of the age. It struck a delicate and rational balance between the straight-jacketed morality of the Puritans and reckless bohemianism of the Cavaliers. The periodical essays appeal not only to the lovers of literature but also to those who were interested in men and manners, fashions and recreations. It appealed very well to women in general and educated housewives in particular because the essayist employed simple everyday language. How is the video? I hope you like the video. I have already produced many videos on the English novel, drama and poetry. You can watch all the videos by visiting my channel Literature Guide. I will meet you soon with a new topic on English literature. But before I leave, I would like to thank all my subscribers and non-subscribers who have given support to this channel Literature Guide. One thing I would like to mention is that my non-subscribers, they visit my channel, they watch the videos on this channel Literature Guide, but they do not subscribe. They won't lose anything if they subscribe Literature Guide. Meet you soon with a new video on English Literature. Meet you. Please subscribe Literature Guide.